good morning everyone or for some people i guess uh, good evening if uh, uh, anyone is uh, anybody is joining us uh, from the eastern hemisphere um this is uh, ibook bindings live stream and uh, today we have uh, uh, a special guest uh, kathy abbott uh, decided to join us uh, from uh, from the united kingdom hi kathy hello <laughs> good morning uh, Good morning, and uh, uh, Pavel uh, Pavel Varonin is usually is my co-host uh, joining us from Moscow. Hi, Pavel. Hi. Um, I'm Stepan, and uh, I'm in Versailles, <laughs> and uh, we're ready to 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 stream. Um, and uh, uh, our today's main theme is going to be Islamic bindings and. Uh, different aspects of working them and uh, different aspects of these bindings and uh, Kathy has uh, quite some experience uh, of working with uh, uh, this uh, uh, type of bindings and uh, we, we've been waiting to talk about it for quite some time. We, we talked to uh, Kathy two years ago or a year yeah. and a half. Well, yeah, long, sure. long time ago, <laughs> and, and, and we, we mentioned uh, Islamic bindings only, uh, only f we, we talked about it only for 10 minutes or so. And uh, uh, there definitely was some response uh, from, uh, from the community and uh, some members wanted to hear more about it. Uh, so we decided to talk about it, uh, specifically talk about um, as usual. If you have any questions, uh, uh, please uh, leave a comment. We're streaming on the Facebook and uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, you can also join our Discord channel. There is a link uh, in the description somewhere in the description of, uh, of uh, the uh, live stream, both on uh, Facebook and uh, uh, on YouTube. Uh, please check the link to uh, Patreon because uh, uh, money we get from our patrons allow us to pay for editing of, of the videos and uh, that's that's quite important and um, and we lost your video uh, okay um, <laughs> but didn't lose my audio that's, no that's no. bizarre yeah, you. Uh, that, 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 that's a new one okay. there we are yeah, you are. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 already happened to, earlier today uh to to my video but we'll see what, what what's happening i hope everything will happen anyway. i would also like to ask our viewers to write where they're listening to us or viewing us from we really like collecting far far, far flung places yeah 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 that's true and uh let's let's start i guess in the beginning. <laughs> uh, so, Kathy, how, how did you, uh, how did it happen that you started to work with Islamic bindings? Um, well, I studied a little bit of Islamic book binding <clears throat> at my first college, uh, the London College of Printing, but it was very, very, uh, just an overview, really. We did a little bit about it, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite accurate, really. And, um, it was a bit, a bit sketchy. Anyway, then I went to Roehampton University and we studied uh, the history of the book in all its forms, from cuneiform tablets to wax tablets to palm leaf books and went through the history of bookbinding. And we, we had a module on Islamic bindings. <clears throat> we were very fortunate enough to have um, Duncan Haldane, who has written a book about Islam Islamic book bindings, is one of our tutors on the Islamic module. So that's where my first sort of proper study of Islamic bindings started. And then and we made models and so on. And then in 1998, that's my first year, I... Um, I've been doing some work with a paper conservator who specializes in Islamic manuscript and her her Islamic binder sadly passed away so she needed another binder so she said Do, did I have any experience of Islamic binding and I said yes a, a bit um I have studied it I, I know the structure I know how it how it is but I'm not I, I'm not an expert so we just started and so from 1998 to now, it's been really one of my main aspects of my work, really. 
as well as Western conservation in my other side of work and fine bindings, but it's definitely, um, it's not much time when I don't have Islamic manuscripts to work on. And they've been all sorts of things, you know, from, well, you'll see, I'll show you some soon of some of the classic examples that you get really, really horrible, horrible repairs done on them. And my job is to try and get them back to quite how they were. But it's a funny world because, um, as I'm sure you, some may know or not, the, the bindings are of, often hijacked. They're not, the, it's, you're, I don't think you'll ever or very rarely find an original binding on an Islamic manuscript because as they break, they find another cover that sort of fits it, not quite, maybe sort of fits it, and put that one on. So then it travels through its life with new add-ons rather like um, houses with extensions <laughs> built on they just have these built on bits and sometimes my job is to extend or to stretch a spine or to to it put extensions on so it'll fit the spine or it'll fit the height or because it's hanging out or something it's very strange it's completely different to western it's it's interesting how it how it uh, corresponds. I think it it was you that we discussed the practices in uh, uh, antiquarian book selling world that uh, there are some uh, um, uh, there there is difference of approach between uh, uh, restorers, conservators, and uh, uh, booksellers, and uh, and well, also in the book selling world uh, we we had uh, uh, some other discussions on our podcast as well. Uh, uh, if, if for, for, for by, by many booksellers, it is considered wrong to, for, for example, to take a cover from uh, uh, a, a better surviving cover from uh, one book and a book block from another book, uh, book and, and marry them and uh, make it a, a better looking first edition, for example. And uh, some uh, some dislike these practices, and other people think they'll well, it's if it sells, it's okay. So. Uh, and uh, and here we see a sort of similar practice uh, with with Islamic. It, it, it's just commonplace. It just is. That's that's what happens, and what has has always happened. So it's not about its value, really. We have to remember that the binding is purely to protect an, a sacred text, mainly in 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 Islamic world. It's to protect a, a sacred script. So the bindings. Although they're important, they're sort of irrelevant as well because it's about it's it's just a house to protect the the contents. And uh, and and so what about uh, a restoration done by uh, European restorers? Because there has to be uh, a certain scarcity of uh, people who are fluent in the language of Islamic bookbinding. Yeah, do I you do you encounter those kind uh, kind of uh, Frankenstein monster works? Absolutely, and and they're <laughs> they're terrible. And that's another part of my job. Sometimes is to take them from being westernized back into being easternized because they have been rounded and backed and all sorts of funny Frankenstein, as you say, uh, bindings put on them and, and sewn in bands like in, in a completely western style binding, but on some Qurans and things like that. So it's not not good. So that that has been my job as well is to to take off these monsters and even though I'm a Westerner, it's very much in a respectful way of the tradition of the of the structure and the content. Uh, there was a, there was a comment that uh, my vo my voice isn't go coming through. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, no, no. There's uh, the most recent comment saying that all three of all us. All three of us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay. What's happening with us? We're no, not... no, no, no. It's just. Uh, uh, it, I think we didn't have a, a, a stream without any technical issues. <laughs> Everything is fine. Uh, so uh, I'll just uh, uh, briefly read uh, uh, the uh, the first comments we got uh, uh, on on Facebook and, and on YouTube. Uh, so there is uh, uh, Timothy from Timothy Bindery from Vietnam. Uh, hello, Stepan. Hello, Katie. Yeah, but uh, um, yeah, uh, hi from cold Sydney, Australia, but not as cold as Europe. 
uh, Alessia uh, Tumbiolo. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I didn't pronounce it so well. Hello, everyone. Peter Triska, hi from New Zealand. Uh, uh, Zeta Bear, hi from the UK. Um, Adeline Ko uh, joined us. Uh, uh, hello for a short while. Got a run. Uh, we'll watch the rerun later. And then on YouTube, uh, uh, Real WD, I, 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 I don't know from, from where they join us. Hi, folks, hope uh, you are all well. Uh, not Spook Arts Festival, uh, sorry to disappoint, uh, not far flung at, at all, Nottingham UK. Uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Marianne uh, uh, wrote about voice, and I'm not sure what was that, but uh, um, yeah. And there's also Deborah from Italy. Hi, everyone. Yeah, uh, Deborah from Katie, Italy. I really wanted to ask you uh, this, uh, 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 this. Where can people actually see good Islamic uh, 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 bindings? Uh, because uh, it, it's, uh, it's really difficult to get your hands uh, uh, or even to see them in museums. Mm. I, I know of some examples, but if you could have your a uh, uh, dream journey uh, 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 to wherever. Where would you go to see uh, the master? My Jesus? number one, my number one would be at the Aga Khan Museum in Canada. I've, I've done a lot of work for them in the past, and they have their collection is just phenomenal. And and I believe that you can go and see them, and I think they're on display there. So if you're in Canada, you can. Um, you can go to the Alga Khan Museum. Pavel, um, keep that in mind. Yep. <laughs> and and I, I think Pavel is looking for for the uh, link, and uh, probably he will post it in a moment on on yeah, yeah. Facebook and YouTube. So the collection everyone. is extraordinary, really, really extraordinary. Then, I mean, we're lucky in the UK because we have the lovely um, National Art Library in the Victoria and Albert Museum, and they have some Islamic manuscripts in their collection and if you get a reader's ticket you can go and see them. Um, they also have an exhibition there. We have um, we have quite a lot of options in the UK because we have SOAS, there's a school of Oriental and Asian Studies and they, they have uh, some in their collection. Um, there is in Ireland the in Trinity College uh, the, and the Chester Beatty collection so there's there's quite a lot, um, certainly here in the in the UK, we're quite lucky. But but and then they have exhibitions from time to time, and and uh, in the, there's sometimes some of them are on permanent display, so you can go and see them. Um, but yes, you can you can certainly get readers' tickets if you if you're a scholar and you want to study them. The National Art Library is quite easy to get a reader's ticket. Um, and then that, that was a really important place for my learning. But for me, you know, I'm lucky because I learn, I don't have time to study them because I'm a, it's my job. It's, I, I'm, I'm not like some uh, people that work with in conservation that they work in a lab and so they're paid to do research i don't have that luxury i have to just work to <laughs> earn my living uh, i i don't have time to do masses of research but i am lucky because i have the actual objects in front of me so over the years i have just logged what a commonplace in different manuscripts and I keep when I'm asked when things are uh, broken and that, or they need to change them. I keep those fragments and then I I write what that was from. So I know like colours of end bands because I've got lots and lots of samples of them, where they've just fragments of silk left in the manuscripts. I've got the silk, so I know what colours they were. So, so and so on. <laughs> And so on. Our viewers are adding two more places to the list. Chester Beatty collection in Ireland. There we are. So yeah. And we also have a viewer from uh, Qatar National Library. 
Hi. I, I assume they have quite a lot to see <laughs> as well. Uh, and my personal memories, very fond memories, are of uh, Topkapi Museum, uh, Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. They have oh, yeah. the, be the best collection of Ottoman uh, uh, yeah. bindings. Although uh, Ottoman bindings are by no means rare, Ottoman Empire was really big, so you can find them in Romania, in Bulgaria, in, in Armenia, in Georgia, and, yeah. in, uh, uh, and in Russia too, although not on permanent display. Unfortunately, I, I have seen them uh, uh, in uh, uh, exhibitions in dire need of attention of someone like you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure. It's, that's a shame because there's, you know, it's a shame really that they come to the West at all, that they should stay in the East to be repaired. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's another uh, issue. We will probably talk more about. Uh, okay, I think you lost my video once again. Yes, you have. I, I, I don't know what's happening and uh, um, I hope it will be the last time uh, this happened uh, during these live streams. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now there is. Just, you're just, you're yeah. just a blank screen. Now. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Give, me, give me a moment to uh, sort it out. Mm. Uh, p perhaps, Katie, you could reminisce a bit about uh, uh, some of the oldest or some of the most unusual manuscripts you had the to most, work on? The, well, the most important one I worked on was, um, <coughs> hmm, when was it? 2017, I think it was. And that was the Birmingham manuscript. I don't know if you've heard of the Birmingham manuscript, but uh, they found some fragments of uh, an Islamic manuscript <clears throat> that they thought Look, what well, well, they seen. They thought it was very old, so they had it carbon dated. And when they had it carbon dated, they found that it was of the time, or just after, around the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So there, it was uh, dated from between 568 to 645 CE. And these were just two leaves, fragments of um, parchment cheapskin parchment manuscript and my job was to make a binding for these two leaves to go on display a simple and it had to be it was quite complicated because I had to make a binding that you can remove the leaves from there without damaging them that that was my question was it a binding or more of a file or something and uh... it is a binding they are bound in but that I had so my tomorrow's past thing came in very handy <laughs> because yeah. I had to make a reversible binding that you could remove the leaves so they could be uh, scanned or anything could be lent or displayed in their own right or in a binding to protect them. So that was a very, very, um, very important part of my career. And, I, I can... and, and just to make it clear, uh, these fragments are some of the earliest fragments of Quran we have. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the oldest complete Quran would be uh, Sana, well, Yemen uh, manuscript, but it's like a generation or, uh, or two later. And so yeah. these are extremely important. They think the Quran was around that time, maybe a little bit after these fragments. So, um, and Prophet Muhammad was uh, a little bit before this day, but not very many years, maybe 10 years before they think he, he, he lived. So it was a very important manuscript to, to bind. And of course, I, it, it was a security nightmare because it's, it's valued as sort of priceless. So I had, um, I had to meet it, take loads of drawings and sketching and tracings and, you know, to get this shape and the depth of the the ripple in the vellum and everything go away make the binding because i only had two days that i could actually make join them um because of the insurance i could only have two days in a secret location uh to work on them so it was terrifying 
absolutely <laughs> terrifying that you make something and if it's not right, I didn't wouldn't have had time to remake it. So it had thankfully all was well. My my so, story. Was good. So that's that's to everyone who who think that uh, a bookbinder's life couldn't be something uh, like like a story for uh, about James Bond or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Secret locations, yeah. swift swift operations, all that yeah. stuff. <laughs> And, it, um, and you can see that manuscript, that's at the Birmingham um, University that's held up in, in the, it's the Mingana collection of, uh, um, Cadbury collection, I think. In, in yeah, and pa Pavel just posted a link uh, for everyone to use if they're interested. I, I also posted the link uh, to our previous talks with Katie uh, on, on our podcast because uh, Katie mentioned uh, tomorrow's past. And that's that. That's a project he's part of, and uh, we we probably will mention it uh, uh, more today. But we will uh, probably have a separate discussion of this project in the future uh, because mm -hmm. it's it definitely de deserves more time. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, uh, how common is working for institutions for you, or is it mostly collectors? Um. So yes, I've worked for some institutions but mostly private collectors and um well the Aga Khan Museum I did a lot of work for over the years um but yes a lot of private collectors or or Islamic dealers or the other art dealers so it's more in that world because in the institutions although I have done some and for the auction houses I do them uh, so I, I work on them as well on behalf of those but for institutions mainly they have their own conservators to work on them there but I have worked on some in the past mm, uh, and speaking of uh, auction houses uh, and uh, sellers I often see uh, uh, Islamic ma uh, manuscripts, and uh, they only have one date, the date of the uh, 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 of the written text, and they very rarely say anything about bindings uh, themselves. So, so you often just presume that the binding is original, or at least no, 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 you don't but presume that you, at all. You often, often don't presume that. <laughs> yeah, but, but the point is, it, it's almost impossible to to oh well, you can tell some you can tell the dates but you if if it's in the similar time you can't swear that that was the original binding and quite often you, you can tell they're not because you when you look inside there's maybe a paper repair underneath a, a sewing thread so you know that's not the original sewing because so you're not just James Bond, you're also uh, an Indiana Jones so <laughs> yeah. book, book binding archaeology yeah <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting. But the the it's just been part of Islamic uh, binding history that bindings are just repurposed all the time. So you even get you know wrong countries binding you know rock like an Ottoman on a Persian and you know anyway things like that Ottoman binding on a Persian manuscript. So. It, it's just the repurpose to protect the book and, and if it fits that will do nicely <laughs> I, read, I read i read a bit on uh, on this subject i was tr uh, uh, trying to find the uh, the oldest examples from different countries and what i could find was always uh, not on, uh, not not preserved on purpose but uh, accidentally uh, like uh, a cache of books found in uh, in yemen uh, that they just forgot about for 300 years. And this is why we have 10th to 11th century, uh, not full bindings, but at least uh, uh, fra fragments of. Yeah. And uh, some examples in Tunisia in the 70s, again, uh, in something like uh, a, a Geniza, but Islamic variant of, I don't know the name of. So apparently in Tunisia, they had a tradition of Preserve, uh, not throwing away, uh, away bindings, but preserving them in a room. Mm. So what we have are mostly fragments. I mm. couldn't find a single uh, uh, 10th or 11th century book that was intact. No, it's and the other thing is that the structure is, in a practical way, is quite is quite weak 
so they break down a lot and they were originally sewn quite often in with silk thread so the silk rots and then the pages start falling out so they get lost they get you, you that's why things get are in bits um and and you, why you only have fragments because the structure breaks down and that's why there is a lot of call for for repairing them because it's it's very weak but still we do know what uh, the traditional techniques were because uh, there, there are um, bookbinding manuals uh, early, early medieval i'm not sure 12th or 13th century so yeah. those are preserved so we do know uh, we do know that uh, the current practices are continuation of yeah. traditional practices yeah. yeah and if you you know i try to to adhere to those principles how many sewing stations there were usually quite often you can see the original sewing stations but um sometimes once they've had heavy conservation that the spine folds have lost or damaged and, and they get eaten quite a lot because of the gum arabic and the and the paper um they're very very worm damaged a lot that i mean that often like lace because they're so tasty <laughs> for insects um so uh you lose sometimes the sewing holes but you know you i try to copy the amount of holes but instead of using silk even if it was using silk originally i would use linen because it's, it's stronger um, so I'm not faithfully copy, slavishly copying what was done before, because if it's broken down because of that, there's no point doing that again. So um, I use linen, unbleached linen. It's, that's, that's, that's a very interesting point. Thank you. Uh, Pavel mentioned uh, bookbinding tutorials, and uh, it's, it's also interesting that uh, in Europe, I think the first, uh, uh, at least the first surviving uh, uh, but when new tutorials come from um, 16th century or something like that, uh, I think there are some German and Swiss books uh, that are could be considered bookbinding tutorials or something. Mm. And the, the first uh, uh, dedicated British bookbinding tutorial is from the 18th century, and Dutch is from this. Yeah. So it's 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 much it's much later. So probably the craft was more secretive in 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 europe or what how how i don't really not, know not not that i want to shift to europe right now it's just interesting how it's, it differs yeah i'm not sure why why <laughs> perhaps just because of the culture um it was closed more closed to western people because of the faith that it's not wasn't because of all the segregations of faith christians were very Christians were Christians, yeah. Catholics had their style, the Jewish faith had their style, Islamic uh, faith had their style. So I think there was a probably, well, there was a lot of wars and um, killings <laughs> because of yeah. faith. Yeah. Yeah. So but but okay. were there also exchanges and interactions, say, yeah. I'd assume in uh, medieval Spain, where all three... Absolutely. So that's, I mean, that's how we, the trade route is how we come to our bookbinding from the code. So the Islamic faith got their codex from the Copts, the Ethiopians. So they were the first, and the Egyptians were the first codex. So then Islamic took that codex from that, from that region. And then it then traveled through the trade routes to Venice, in Italy, the Moorish come through the uh, from North Africa to uh, the Moorish parts of Spain, through Turkey into Europe. So you know that's they started moving. Um, but yes, I'm sure. In the in you know there's a lot of misunderstandings as well in the early when they were first repaired by Western. <laughs> that's when things started to go horribly wrong you know <laughs> there's things in the 17th and 18th century bindings on islamic that are just you know not not right at all because they just did a western style and particularly in the victorian period loads of 
Victoriana style bindings on Islamic manuscripts. <laughs> I can only imagine. So uh, Kathy, Kathy prepared uh, some uh, some images for us uh, from from her past projects, and uh, we will I guess we will switch to that in a moment. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I wanted to I wanted to uh, say again that uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please uh, uh, post comments on on Facebook or YouTube, and uh, we'll try to get to them. And uh, uh, please uh, subscribe, like, share. I don't know what. And uh, uh, please check the link to Patreon because uh, well, uh, it's uh, your your support is really crucial uh, to us. And uh, there were a couple of questions on. Uh, uh, from from our viewers, so I'll, I'll read them right now. But uh, Kathy, you will probably decide if you will answer them yeah, okay. uh, right now or a bit later when you're. Or if I can answer them, answer them indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, 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 Shanaka Pereira, uh, I'm a bookbinder and and book paper conservator in. Uh, um, uh, Qatar National Library, yes, Qatar National Library. Uh, could you please uh, uh, talk more about the corrosive manuscript binding treatment and so uh, what we can do and what is the best solutions? Uh, uh, if... but, well, that's, I'm not a paper conservator, so I'm not your woman. <laughs> I, gu I guess we need to invite Rita Udino once again or, yes. or somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, because I don't deal with the internal. Um, yeah, I must make that clear. I, I only deal with the with the bindings. I don't deal with the internal. So I work a lot with an Islamic paper conservator, and so okay. she does she does the insides, and then I get it to do the outsides. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really sorry, but I can't answer that because I'm not a paper conservator. Okay. And Islamic uh, manuscripts uh, uh, were written on paper from uh, very early. From much earlier than they were in, uh, in no, Europe. From, um, from about the eighth century, uh, paper started being used. So that is quite useful. If you see manuscripts that are on parchment, they're usually the early ones. Not always, because they, they like in Western binding, it still continued. Also, when text was really big when they use really big text, they are usually the very early ones. Lots, hardly any decoration, but lots of uh, big text. They usually can, that can help you find the early ones. But yeah, um, it was, first of all, it's parchment was used in, and then from the eighth century paper started yeah, much earlier than, than anywhere else where it was really commonplace to use paper. The paper's really good condition made of flax or rag um very very strong very good quality the only the only terrible thing is the insect damage because yeah. yeah. they're just delicious <laughs> yeah. So yeah. delicious. Yeah. Uh, by so, the way what 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 about the scrolls uh i know there was and still are Quran, uh, quranic scrolls uh, have you work, uh, worked on that uh, i've never worked on a scroll um because there is met that would be mainly the internal things because they they would be uh, I don't I don't get them um, no I, I, I'm not a, I'm not I don't think I've ever worked on a scroll. So another one uh, this time from uh, YouTube. I'm quite interested in the Mongol and Chinese influence on Islamic manuscripts. Uh, did the uh, Oriental influence make bindings better, or was there no change in the binding process? Oh, I've only worked on a, on a couple of uh, Asian, uh, on well, my, mainly sort of Indonesian um, and Burmese manuscripts. So not really Chinese and the Mongols. I've not really worked on any. So I can't really answer that either. I'm really sorry because I, I, I've not worked on them. As I say, I'm not a scholar of Islamic manuscripts. I only know what I know from working on them. So I don't and, know. And what about Burmese and Indonesian ones? Were they any different? Because I know materials can differ quite a lot. I've seen a, a, a book that had its board uh, woven out uh, out of plant fiber. So yeah. Yeah, the, the 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 board, the ones I've worked on from my memory, the um, the the structure of the board was different, flax or some kind of plant fiber board. 
um, and more lacquer, lacquer style bindings than than leather, sort of leather with lacquer, not really leather manuscripts like they are in the Ottomans, the Persians, uh, Indian what Indian as well, Indian. I've had I've had more lacquer Indian bindings than leather, but I think I've only worked on one or two Indian with leather, more lacquer, lacquer bindings. Uh, like in Iran too, because mo uh, at least since 18th century, most of the covers are, are lacquered, at least the, uh, the best known ones uh, the, uh, from the Kahar period. Yeah, there's a lot of lacquer, well, there's some lacquer, but in, in the Persian, in Persian Iran is mainly leather, so with yeah. with filigree and you know all of the other beautiful decorative elements. So yes, I've, I've no experience in Chinese and Mongol. I've not worked on any. So sorry, I'm really failing. On my but but, but we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll ask around. Yeah. We'll find yeah. someone that, who knows. That's yeah. that's a really interesting question. Also, also a question from from Yeltal uh, from uh, from Australia. Uh, but I, I will I will go through this question pretty fast because uh, we we'll probably have it answered uh, in some of our podcasts. And uh, so in Spain, with the with the meeting of three religions, are there books from the Jewish community or did they write on scrolls mainly? It's sort of out of the scope of our today's uh, discussion. But we have prepared three podcasts uh, uh, dedicated to uh, Jewish uh, uh, manuscripts and uh, uh, Hebraic manuscripts uh, uh, in all their difference uh, mm -hmm. in, in, in their history and their modernity and uh, uh, archaeology of, uh, of uh, Hebraic manuscripts. Uh, uh, and uh, we will publish them a bit later uh, this year on our YouTube channel. And uh, we also... Um, uh, talked to uh, a printer, George uh, Schlar, uh, from, uh, uh, he's from Portugal, but now uh, lives in, in Denmark. And we also discussed some uh, early uh, Jewish uh, uh, books uh, from Portugal as well, theirs. And oh. that's also a, a, a podcast that we'll be publishing a bit later this year. So, uh, oh, just didn't see him much. <laughs> not, not an answer to, to Yael's uh, question, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll give you an answer with our podcast a bit later. And then week. some. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, should, should, should we switch to, to yeah. the photos you wanted to show? Yeah, show you some some things yeah. that I've worked on. Okay, let's have a look. Let's do it. So um, this is a Safavid manuscript. Um, so Egyptian. It is Persian, actually. It's Persian. Um, oh, Safavid. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. So this this one was a a manuscript that, again, this is one that I think was repurposed. Yes, it was with repurposed boards because I had to extend it to fit the manuscript in. So I had to make the envelope, the four edge strip bigger um, and the spine bigger. But it's this is the inside of it. And this is it after I've done its extensions uh, on the outside of it with the ribbon decoration. So you can see great big extensions. <laughs> yeah. It was more, a manuscript much smaller, um, much thinner. The height was right, but the width wasn't. Um, and that's the spine. That's that one. Uh, uh, sir, uh, could you go to, uh, to the very first one where we can see the flap? Uh, I don't quite how. Uh, yeah, how how does it work exactly? I mean, what goes on top? Why do they uh, almost always have this sort of flap of this shape? Is it functional? So, yes, it's it's to protect the fore edge of the book, so it goes it goes. You have a, a sort of four edge strip with joint spaces, and then the envelope flap or the lisan 
comes over and it goes underneath the front board and fully protects the binding. So, but why is it this uh, a, a wage shape? I'm not actually sure why it's that shape. I mean, it, this is because it's, it's been ever thus, but I don't know why it's that shape. I don't. And, know. and how are they stored? Are they stored horizontally or the or oh, vertically? Usually, usually horizontally. Uh, how I've how I've met them, they've been stacked. And uh, and uh, uh, do uh, do they often have like boxes? Because I've seen quite a few uh, a few boxes, but never with this style. So boxes uh, are for well, box books and song books. There's box the box. I've worked on one or two, one, one, and and had to view another box binding, but that was. They were very, they're very rare, the Islamic box bindings, which are, if people don't know, they're a manuscript sort of in a box, but it's bound into the box and the front, the lid of the box is the front cover. So it's in its own travel case, really. But they're very, very rare. They're, they're very hard to come by. Um, and in all my years, I've only actually worked on one of them. Um, and had to view another one that then didn't come to anything. But so I've seen two, but that's in all the years I've been working. I've worked on a lot, lot, lot of manuscript. Um, but these bindings are, apart from the head and tail, that <clears throat> are not protected with anything. Everything else is fully protected. So they are sort of in a box, kind of a box. Um, so they don't really need a box. Only very precious manuscripts do I usually make boxes for. Or for institutions, they want them in a box. But usually they suffice just as they are. They're very sturdy. Why, why do you think uh, uh, it's uh, de facto standard uh, for Islamic books to have this edge protection, but not at all so for uh, the European codices? Is it because of the early adoption of paper? Because, uh... um, it's a good question. I don't really know, but I think it's probably because they value the text so much more because it's such a sacred text. It's, it's, uh, I think it's to do with that, that. And the same with, you know, with Coptic bindings when they were held in little satchels and or bindings with clasps around to keep everything together. That also is because they were religious um, tracts, so they, they wanted to protect them. So I think this is all to do with protecting the open edge, which is the edge that's going to get the damage, um, to protect it, because it's sacred. In that inter my, interesting. Yeah, my reason, that would be my guess on why. Interestingly, that uh, uh, in European bindings, even even if they have uh, uh, clasps, uh, and, and clasps, as far as I understand, they, uh, besides the fact that they uh, 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 protect the book uh, f from not opening uh, uh, suddenly and damaging the pages, they, they also protect the vellum because vellum shifts and moves and tries to, you it know, open. Practical. For many so, bindings, it was practical. Because so, so you need to tighten the book as much yeah. as, as you yeah. can. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, the, the front edge never ha almost never had any protection. So there was a clasp, but then there was an uh, open, open front edge. And uh, uh, there are some modern types of bindings uh, with uh, covers for the uh, front edge, but uh, especially some, some Bible bindings and... Uh, uh, but but not not uh, it's it's not so widespread in, in, and we in have the yeah in in west in in Europe we we started to use the yap edge for yep. like vellum bindings and yep. things to protect yeah they had clasps so it was to protect the text from the damage of the clasps of the clasps so yeah so it's all practical but this I think is to protect sacred text to stop it getting anything getting inside or damage to the front. I think that's why they differ because we, our sacred text didn't move. They, they, these were traveling sacred texts, whereas our sacred texts were in monasteries and they stayed put, they didn't move.
And when they uh, were traveling, they, uh, they were what was uh, this type of traveling uh, uh, traveling binding when it looked like a bag? Yeah, this the um, uh, girdle binding. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, in the very early bindings, yes. So they they anything that travels, I think, had to have a bit more protection. That's my guess. Anyway. So with with this uh, these extensions, uh, uh, I, I I have an additional question. Uh, yeah. Have you have you ever in your experience have you ever witnessed uh, these extensions being additionally decorated? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, really, and some some of them really horribly, <laughs> <laughs> really badly. Someone meaning very well but doing it really badly. <laughs> Um, but some, yeah, done really nicely. But they're ex they're add they're add-ons. I yeah. don't do that. That I'm very, and I, I want that's a point I want to make is that because I am non, I'm non-Muslim and I'm a Westerner. I if my clients want me to rebind something or or do something, I don't put decoration on them because it's not my culture and it's I feel it's it would be wrong. It's, I don't have a deep enough understanding of it to do it. So I'll make something that is sympathetic and gentle and does its job of protecting the book, but I don't put decoration on them or just simple lines. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that 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 what I that's what I wanted to add that it, it should be either perfectly corresponding to the original designs. And then obviously you need to have a huge understanding of, of, of the original designs and of the culture, yeah. uh, or it should be very simple. And I guess that that co corresponds to yours, your preferred style. Uh, and uh, Hopefully do something uh, very, very or, or nothing at all. Uh, otherwise, it, otherwise it's, it's, it, it, it can look just absolutely awful. And uh, yeah, it's very obvious if it's got a new binding from me, it's, it's of the right color. The structure is good. It's still made with pasteboard boards because the Islamic bindings were always made of layers of, of paper. So I make them like that with handmade paper boards. Everything is right. They feel right, but they just don't look right because they are new and everyone will know they're new. So I feel safe. I can sleep safely in my bed, know that they're okay. bound well, but they're, they're not masquerading as something. It's not my culture, so I don't feel it's my place. Do you um, also sign your work? No, 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 never. No, I sign my my contemporary fine bindings, and that's all I sign. I don't sign any restoration work. It's not. It's, I'm just the person to. I'm a nurse or a doctor. That's that's my job. I'm not. It's not my ego. Need oh, that's an interesting interesting parallel. Like you don't tattoo your name on a patient. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You would never do that, Pavel. <laughs> would be wrong. So that's that one. Um, let me just close that one down. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. Yeah, okay. I'll go into. This is a, an Ottoman one that I've just uh, done recently. So this one had, it's in really, really good condition. The, the manuscript is fine, but the binding boards were off and uh, at the foredge flap in the foredge area, there's a little bit of loss. So that was my job was to get the boards back on and repair the, the uh, foredge. So that's it before, that's it after with its new spine and forage flap there. With my little repairs and the new spine. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing. That's the thing. I don't want them to look like anything. They just really function. And this client, it had the fragments of the Islamic manuscript uh, uh, end bands, but he didn't want me to re-sew them. So we just left them. So they're all stringy, but they're there. The original fragments are there. Um, so that's another side. Oh, I've come out again. I didn't mean to do that again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about the, uh, the end papers. Uh, because mm -hmm. I know that sometimes uh, they were uh, made out of stamped leather. Yeah. 
And uh, do, uh, uh, do they uh, su survive well? Because I uh, that could be. Yeah, they do survive quite well. They're re it's really thin that stamp leather. It is like paper. It's so so thin. So if I have to repair it, if to lift it is really difficult because it's so thin. But they they do survive surprisingly well. If only ever insect damage is is yeah. There, there's many many I've done that have perfect. I just have to do small repairs. This is this is this one I'm showing now is quite interesting because I have a client who just has likes his his father's collection and he collects the covers of bindings. So this isn't of this one is just a cover. <laughs> I think, yeah, this one is just a cover. It's not to go on anything. He just preserves it. Could, so, you, show, could you show it in full? Am I not showing it in full? Yeah, we're, we're looking at like your file manager. Ah. Why is that? Mm. Maybe, you, could... may, maybe you need to share another window. Yeah, yeah. Or the whole screen that would uh, that would work best. Like stop okay. sharing the screen and then share it again and select screen like the whole screen, not a single window. Hmm. No. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, is that better. Okay, good. So this this is a cl this is what I typically get to deal with these very beautiful repairs that somebody else has done. I mean, I mean, I'm being very sarcastic there. These are really monstrous repairs that somebody has done. But it's just at, what at, we at least at least not uh, not how how you call it this uh, m metal looking uh, tape uh, used yeah. for for repairs. Yeah, I, I, I forgot the the name of it. It's not a yeah gaffer tape or yeah yeah yeah. Like that this is at least with leather but they're pretty awful um anyway that's so which pa which parts were original here all the, all, all the red parts are original yeah. all the brown parts are these lovely add-ons <laughs> um so the client wanted me to just make it look a bit happier but and then and then just keep it as it is or reuse it for another he just keeps them as as they are he doesn't reuse them he just keeps them uh, i think that's really nice that they that they survive but you can see it's a lot of the insect damage there and in, in the corner uh, some loss of board so i often build up board edges so that's after i've taken the brown repairs off uh, do you make sure there are no insects left? Do you treat yeah. uh, the boards? Yeah. You have to check them. Um, I'm quite careful to check because I obviously don't want an infestation in my studio. So <laughs> yeah, very uh, closely <coughs> check them. And um, if if I see anything, then then they have to go back to to be dealt with. <laughs> I'm not having any insects. It, they'll go in a plastic bag and be returned. To, to have them get rid of the insects, but that I think I've only ever had one insect, live insect, in, in the, all my years, I think. But that's it after repair. So it's still not beautiful, but it's least you can see everything of the original and just with new repairs. So there's that one. And this is uh, this was probably a binding for a printed book. Yes, this is. Um, yeah, this would have been for a manuscript, but it's. Oh. They, they just get displaced. So what else have I got here? Uh, well, this, this I went to an exhibition of uh, uh, of uh, Persian printed books, and many of them were uh, in bindings like this, which surprised me actually. Yeah, they're. They're, um, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's not what I want. One second. Sorry, yeah, we, 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 we got uh, the previous image stuck, so maybe you'll you'll have to uh, switch. Oh, it's still there. 
Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, get rid of that. Oh. I'll have to go in again. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Bear with me. Oh. No, now now we're seeing the file the file manager. Yeah. Yep. There we are. No, just the file yeah, manager. Just the file manager. Okay. For that, you need to share the whole screen. Otherwise, it only sh uh, shows one window and ignore. Is that that? Can you yeah. see it? Yeah. So this and is... I have no idea where this is from. This is this is interesting. This is another one that's had really awful repairs, uh, huge repairs on it, and. This is in a really, really sorry state. Had, if you can just see to the left, there's some um, piece of flap or something. Yeah, the, on the envelope flap was silk, which was the original green silk. But then somebody's added on this sort of Victorian bit of paper yeah. as a strip. It, that, so it had all sorts of Frankenstein's added onto it. And this is the back. So I had to strip all of this off, but we didn't know why there were so many repairs on there. What was there any leather left underneath? So um, with it also it also looks like there was some water damage and some sun yeah. damage, and yeah, I don't know what what else damage. It, it was very crusty. So yeah. even after I repaired it, it was very crusty. But the owner wanted it to be as it was. Uh, to get rid of all this new stuff and so that they could see everything and there was there was actually quite a lot of the original leather underneath these horrible repairs so that's the cover repaired it's very lumpy but um that's after i cleaned it all off and repaired it and then that's it back on the on the manuscript and um... Can anything be done to uh, uh, flatten the leather again, or is it irreversible? No, it's irreversible. It's been long because it's the paste boards, the paper boards underneath the covers. Once they get damaged, the leather follows the shape of those boards, and it's stuck. And if you try to flatten them, you'll just break the leather. It's so crispy, you'll you'll just crack it. So I I did some. Um, I cleaned it quite a lot, and then uh, it had a a, a a paste wash, sometimes with gelatin, just a tiny bit of gelatin, just to get some protein back into the skin, and then um, some leather dressing, just to moisturise it a bit because it was so crispy. But that's that's how that one is. Right, I'm going to try and do this well now. Wait, wait one second whilst we're on there. Um, this, what else have I got here? Um, oh yeah, this one was quite interesting. And we still have... Yeah, I know that, I know on. that, I know that. Uh, <laughs> there is another question on uh, while we are switching. There is another question on on YouTube, and I'll uh, read it. Uh, and uh, you go forward with switching, please. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, Ma Mark Furness, uh, what do you do with all the removed uh, uh, repairs? Do you keep them, uh, or does the client want to retain them as a record of uh, what it, what it went through? And uh, uh, firstly, I think we discussed this uh, with uh, Kathy uh, uh, during our previous uh, uh, podcast. So you, you can check the link uh, uh, I posted above to, to these talks. Uh, we discussed uh, how it works. We also talked about it with uh, uh, two, uh, uh, our guests from uh, the, the conservators, uh, a, a lab, of, uh, a London lab based lab uh, who do the book and paper conservation and uh, art conservation. And also we talked about it with Rita Udina, a book, conservator, uh, book and paper conservator from Barcelona. So we've covered this topic quite a lot. Uh, if... I, I keep them and then yep. I'll offer them back to the client and they can do with them what they will after I've, but I keep everything, return everything. And it's not my job to, to discard or keep 
I don't I don't want them because it's not mine. So do, you, do you document your uh, your work? Um, only in the because I'm again I'm not working in a lab. This is just my job. Um, I document. I photograph things and I've I have my notebook that I log everything in and in the invoice I put everything that I've done so the client gets a breakdown of what I've done a little report in the in the invoice so yeah everything and everything I use is completely conservation grade materials so everything is reversible um, this one I'm showing you now is enormous <laughs> it was can you you can see this one it's of, of the M band. If you, can you see this one? Have I gone yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is a Shah Nama uh, manuscript, and the spine alone was, uh, I think, fifteen centimeters deep. It was for me to get it into a press with my hand span. It took my full span, and it was so heavy. It was a whopper. So the Islamic manuscript, uh, sorry, the Islamic embounding took quite some time. So I just wanted to show here where I've lined the spine with, I use a, an unbleached Irish linen scrim, which is very similar to the coarse linen spine linings that I find in Islamic manuscript. It, um, so I use that, and, but sometimes it can be leather lining. I just try to follow what was there before if, I, if I've if i got remnants. Um, but the, the coarse linen is m the most common spine lining. Um, so here is the M band in all its glory. So you can see it has a strip of leather as the central core of the M band, and then uh, the chevron. And uh, chevrons are the uh, are the typical pattern. It yeah. is always it's that's always what you find in them. And the colours are um, they use there's quite a sort of stock colours. So there's kind mm -hmm. of pale blue, okay, pale blue and lemony yellow, gold gold. We'll say gold for yellow. So pale blue and gold, pink and gold, red and gold, green and gold green and pink there's a lot of pink um and reds so i try uh, I've, as i said i keep this the remnants of the threads that i find and i log what that was from so i can sort of oh oh that one had pink but i think they used to think that a color was for a certain type of text but i don't think they think that anymore I, it doesn't seem to follow a pattern anyway there, there is some some variety of patterns uh, for for the Islamic emblems, and I I think it was uh, uh, Georges Boudalis. Uh, uh, he he had uh, a series of posts uh, with uh, different uh, Islamic emblems on on his fo Facebook feed uh, a while ago, a couple of years ago, uh, but I think it could be found, and uh, that 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 was a f beautiful exhibition in, in, on on its own. Um, well, I've I've only ever come across the chevron. In my when there's fragments left, it's only ever been the chevron. Um, I've not I've not found any other types in my in my time. And how long did this take? What the M band? Yeah. yeah. Um, probably a couple of hours each one. Yeah, a couple of hours. I'm quite quick at them now. <laughs> um, but it's it's the. Oh, actually, no, the primary sewing was probably, no, it's probably a few hours on that one, I can't remember. But this, so this is, you know, you might go, oh, but the the covers were a paper lacquered cover that um, were almost perished. So they were much smaller than the manuscript. So the client asked me, to embed them into a leather binding. To, so this was not my choice. This was the client's choice. So don't think I, I chose to do this. This was what I was asked to do because um, it's for a personal collection. So um, that's that's what it is. But there it is. Because so it was inlaid? 
it was inlaid yes mm -hmm. i cut um because that they're paste boards I, I traced the shape of the original cover and removed a layer of that paper so they're sunk they're completely flush to the cover so they weren't pressed i don't i don't press them in case i break anything but everything is preserved and it's completely flush so that it won't get chipped or damaged but that was that was that one so the, there is a question uh, I, I guess it's uh, about this uh, uh, this book uh, uh, on, on YouTube Robin Tate uh, would you mind elaborating where the huge manuscript came from or was constructed please and uh, any idea of uh, what the pink is a natural dye pink I guess it's it's uh, it's about the end one but I'm not sure but oh yeah I because we in western binding early m bands are pink as well so it must it was from uh, all all m band colors were from pigments that used in the time in art and things so natural dyes so probably maybe from the cochineal or something like that yeah. Yeah. From so the pink. there is additional comment there uh yes wondering whether he, uh it is the natural kernel insect dye, traditionally not the one in the photo. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, that because in earliest Western bindings, the earliest M bands, when they start using color, it's pink. It's yeah. pink or it's green. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's the same in Islamic, but they use silk, um, and we used linen. But it, I, I'm sure it's the same reason. Uh, what else was I going to show you? so we we, we we talked that uh, you will probably stay with us for one hour i i'm not sure if you have to go or you no, have it's okay, to more... oh, okay perfect because we have, we have a couple more questions as well and uh, uh just to to understand how 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 is it going um let me just get rid of this one oh. yeah, it's okay here we go so this is another just to show some repairs, some simple repairs. So this, I just so it's 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 in it, during the process of repairs. Yeah. So this is to show how I repair broken corners when there's nothing left of the of the corners. So this is um, handmade paper, layers and layers and layers of handmade paper built up, built up, built up, built up until it's the right height, and then I cover them with leather. Um, but it's following the same um, tradition of paste boards of layers of paper. I just copy that with handmade paper and you get really nice board edges that are soft, that feel right. They don't feel any different once they're covered. They don't feel any different to the rest of the cover. And you use handmade paper because of the uh, fiber size? Nice fiber and, they, and because the pasteboards are handmade paper as well so they're just they just it's like for like and they bed in really nicely and using paste to sort of smush smush technical term smush them together <laughs> <laughs> and i and i edge pair the um repairs with long long bevels so that they you get a sort of scarf join on the old paper so they're really strong it's not just because you have to do that otherwise they'll just snap off and you glue them using some uh, reversible glues yeah just just starch paste, just paste. somebody yeah. like my like mark cochrane would hit you on the head right now pavel uh because uh, he, he he would ask you not to use the word glue but uh, adhesive <laughs> <laughs> i don't mind you using glue but uh, uh, I don't but need but, oh, yeah. by, by the way, I always wanted to ask, uh, 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 conservatives often talk about reversible techniques. Did you actually ever have to reverse your own repairs? Yes, I have. I have. In um, When I used to work at the Antiquarian Book Dealers, Bernard Quaritch, this is how I know that EVA is really easily reversed because I had to find um, a set of um 18th century pamphlets into a binding and i made a binding and then they wanted someone wanted just one part one of the pamphlets one part of this book they wanted that so i had to take my binding apart 
to get that one out. And it was so easy to reverse. I was delighted. Nice to know. <laughs> so it was good it because it had been on for a few years and the EVA just, it was because, you know, we're told that that is the most easily reversed, but I believe it now because it was really easy to reverse and it cleaned off with no residue on there. It was very, very simple. So, yes, I have. We, we, we get questions about uh, reversible adhesives and uh, uh, archival materials uh, uh, in general uh, from, from the community from time to time. And I will point to this uh, uh, this place in our talk in the future <laughs> yes that, that, that it is really genuinely there's oh. also this eva and eva i found there's some different types of EV, eva or eva con r and i really like i don't want to drop a brand in here but conservation by design have done a lot of research on eva adhesives and uh, stuart what's his surname stuart something rose might be stuart rose it, it um He's done so much research on there, and his their their EVA is super easily easy to reverse. Well, if you, if you can drop the link to uh, conservation by design uh, uh, in, in the comments, uh, please, please do. On mm. is their brand name for it. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I, uh, we just we, we got a couple more questions that uh, came uh, uh, really before uh, Robin Tate's questions. I, I, I wanted to mention them and yes, uh, yes. We'll, we'll see if, if we can answer them right now or mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit later uh, because it's just and Robin Tate added another question and I just wanted to, you know, to, to, to follow the priority or some sort of something. <laughs> So, um, Yael Tal, another question. Uh, do the forge edge flaps fold onto the front or back of the book, or, or is it interchangeable? And uh, that that's a good question, uh, uh, definitely. It, as far as I've ever met, it comes round to the front. But it comes from the, it's joined to the backboard and comes round and protect and, and sits under the front board. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Car Carousel's uh, uh, commented Stuart Welch from uh, Conservation Bank. Stuart Welch, that's it. Yes, not thank Stuart. You, uh, thank you very thank much, you. Cara. <laughs> I had a senior moment where my brain lost its memory. <laughs> yeah, Stuart um, Welch, that's it. Thank and, you. And then uh, Chanaka uh, Pereira. Uh, I have one book cover parchment damaged, damaged by insects since the holes are often visible in heritage books and manuscripts. Uh, Book size uh, 14 and a half uh, centimeters by nine by three. Um, and cover on it goes. Boards, yeah. uh, cover parchments, fine leather. Uh, yeah, there is a, a whole uh, long description of, of the binding. Uh, I, I guess it's not a question, it's just. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is a lot of insect damage. It, 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 that, that's, I guess that's the, the meaning of this comment. There, there is a lot of. Uh, 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 insect damage in uh, in, 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 in in Islamic manuscripts. It's yeah. right because of the lovely, delicious um, adhesive. The because they coated the paper that shiny, lovely. If you've met Islamic paper, but it's not like ours. It's really heavily burnished, and it's it almost feels a bit like parchment, but it's thick and shiny and burnished. Um, well, some of the older ones are thick, you can get very thin ones, but very shiny, but it's got coating of gum arabic on there, so the insects absolutely love it. Um, they delicious. are delicious. Delicious. Like and, the, and what can be done to, uh, to preserve them? Keep them in a box in, vac in vacuum or? I guess probably and box. And then, then ta ta tardigrades will attack it in the mm. vacuum. But it's it also because of the heat in the country, you get humidity and that gets everything, all insects get excited then once there's humidity in there, that it gets the scent coming up. Mmm, delicious. I can smell fillet steak. <laughs> they, can, they smell it. This one I'm showing now is another board repair. So again, building up the corner. So this is before and after. So that's how it was before at the top and then at the bottom after I've repaired it and recovered it. So just to show you how they look once they've been um, repaired. There, there, there also was a question about the uh, handmade paper you, you used. Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll read it right now as well. And then uh, Mark Furness on YouTube also mentioned Stuart Welsh. Uh, I, 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 I 
many thanks to to our viewers and members of our community for for uh, helping us. Uh, yeah, they're every, very good. My memory goes. <laughs> this happens every time, and I'm so happy that everybody is, is so so uh, uh, helpful. Uh, and so uh, from Robin Tate's, uh, are the handmade papers hemp hemp fiber? No, cotton rag. I, what I use. Yeah. I use cotton rag and in Islamic uh, paper it's usually flax or rag so to follow yeah. the, 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 the traditional so I use rag, heavy rag, cotton rag. So, uh, so this is uh, particular to Islamic bindings because I um, most often we hear about mulberry three yeah. Japanese uh, conservation <laughs> Japanese, grade paper. Yeah, for Japanese tissues, but in handmade papers, it's usually heavy linen or cotton rag, particularly in Western books, it's linen, linen or cotton rag, but in Islamic, it would be flax or cotton rag. And uh, uh, where do you, uh, do you buy uh, uh, that paper? Is there a brand or? I'm Source. really happy because I have a huge old collection of beautiful handmade papers. Um, but there's still some really nice handmade papers being made. There's um, we have some lovely new new handmade papers. There. There's um, I think he's called Gandalf Ulbricht from Germany. He's making some beautiful uh, conservation grade papers. Then there is the Paper Foundation in the UK that is making some beautiful papers, all cotton rag, really high quality. Mm -hmm. um, in the States, there's Morgan uh, Conservation Papers, makes lovely. He's a, a lot of cotton and abaca. He uses a lot of abaca. Mm -hmm. um, there's Katie McGregor in the States who makes divine papers. Um, but I'm lucky to have lots of good old ones, good old English heavy cotton lovely that i've inherited over the years really high quality so i've got quite a lot of stock of good papers um i'm lucky is um, it is it is it, is it uh, do you how do you sell how how how, how, how should i say it? isn't uh ah do, don't you regret using these uh, uh, old uh, and unique yes. papers <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but you can't just look at them and put them in a frame. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. When because there's been some that I love so much, so I use a lot because they're so brilliant. And then I'm down to the last sheet, and I think, oh my god, why did I use all of this paper? Because now I don't have any, and I can't get any more. But... So you you need to find a paper maker who, who can repl replicate the, yeah, the same and, results. And there are now. Fortunately, there are because we were in a de terrible situation a few years ago where there was just hardly any good handmade paper being made. It was getting worse and worse. Um, but now it's picking up again. So I'm quite excited that what uh, we've got. I... I, I'm sorry for for this uh, uh, tangent, but yeah. uh, uh, I, I, lo I love I love I love I love watching videos about uh, uh, restoring old buildings and and stuff and uh, you yeah, know, castles, chateaus, mansions, all all that. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I I I I'm quite handy, and uh, I like uh, uh, I, I'm not sure about building things because I. I had experience only with my grandfather's dacha house, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I I just realized a couple of days earlier that my current goal is to buy a, a water mill and restore mm. it, That's and probably great. make make a paper making area there. Wonderful! There we are. That's an ambition. <laughs> well, uh, we have interviewed uh, a man with a similar ambition yeah, who yeah, failed. Yeah, yeah. So beware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're still young you're still young uh yeah. Stefan, so, you've yeah. Got yeah. <laughs> so this one is a lacquer binding um paper lacquer paper with lacquer and this obviously in a very very poor state well i haven't seen a single one in pristine condition they <laughs> always have repairs uh this was not good um, and then i had to repair it so and then put it back on the manuscript so well this is this is painting conservation I mean... <laughs> painting conservation so this this was 
sort of heavy, you know, I had to touch in quite a lot. If we go to the previous, there was a lot of loss and then yeah. I had to touch in quite a lot um, for this one. But, and there was evidence of leather underneath the spine. So that's why there's leather again. There was leather underneath that paper on the side. So that's why it's got leather again. Um, and then that went on to a very tiny little manuscript, very probably only four sections, I think it had. Um, and and this is lacquer, so you had to uh, use actual lacquering technique, or did you just in paint using? I just, uh, modern I just left it because I don't know what modern lacquer is going to do to old lacquer. So I just paint, just handmade paper infills and painted, and because I use. Uh, Liquitex acrylic heavy body high pigment uh, paint it is quite shiny so it's it did it looked quite sympathetic you can see them and that's good I'm glad that you can see them but they're <clears throat> screaming they're not screaming the obvious I think that's I think that's all I've got to show you I mean I've done lots in my time but there's some things that I just not able to show you oh I, I did have a picture of one more one more thing i just want to show you is um, so this is the birmingham fragments mm, we're still seeing uh the file manager okay let me just let me just close that this i am very enthusiastic to see there we are mm. you got it now yeah yeah, yeah. So that this is the earliest manuscript that has been found so off the time so this is indeed a binding as you said this is my binding <laughs> that i did on it this is my very sympathetic it was just a, a sort of chocolate brown leather uh, with an envelope flap and handmade neutral handmade paper inside for the doublures on the inside and and you said uh, the leaves could be removed from it they could be removed and how does that work because it's not there's, obvious there's um it's sewn onto a stubbed end sheet that has a, a sewing attachment with vellum at the ends that can slide it off and on. It's, it's not easy because if that was the other thing, it can't be too easy to get it off in case somebody tries to steal it. So it's got to be a bit of a someone with, with skill can take it out and put it back, but it's not too easy, not too difficult to get it out. So yeah, it was... Uh, very hard to devise a structure when you haven't got it with you because I always work with what I've got and I, I only had it I only had two hours with it to um, to devise what exactly I was going to do but it was such a, an honor an absolute honor to work on such a important important thing we actually were up for a conservation award for this project but we didn't win but we were nominated we had the dinner <laughs> <laughs> we had the dinner but we didn't win uh the judges were probably what just to leave <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just this but it, the whole thing of having it carbon dated yeah. is it's uh they, the rest of the manuscript they think is in, I think it's in France. They've found some other bits of it of the same manuscript in France. So but they're keeping hold of theirs and this is staying in, in Birmingham. Birmingham is in the middle of England, by the way. It's not Birmingham, USA. It's Birmingham, UK. <laughs> Uh, so there are, there are a couple of more questions I, I wanted to, to mention. Uh, I stopped now. And, uh, sorry? I'll stop sharing now. Come back. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, questions and, and, and comments. Uh, 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 once again, Robin Tate, University of Iowa Center for the Book Does Handmade Papers. Uh, oh, yeah, lovely papers, yeah, they do. And love then, them. gorgeous, I guess, that uh, uh, related to the last uh, object you, you've shown us. 
And then do you have any restrictions uh, uh, regarding materials, uh, etc., for working on Islamic bindings, uh, both religious and secular? And I, I've been trying to find, uh, uh, there was this text about uh, uh, mindful approach to uh, working with Islamic bindings and choosing the materials and uh, leathers especially. And yeah. I, 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 I cannot find the link, but uh, uh, maybe Kathy will... Uh, uh, elaborate or uh, well, comment on that it's obviously we in in book binding here we don't have sort of halal prepared goat skins so yeah. um so i, I just <clears throat> tell my clients that the, that where my goat skins are from um and it, it's their call really on it because i can't get halal skins mm -hmm. so if anyone knows where i can get halal skins <laughs> that are suitable for book finding because you could of course you could get skin but it's got to be suitable for book finding so um obviously never pig skin uh, that goes without saying um no. but i try to just uh, be as mindful as i can try to copy like for like um, but all my clients know that the skins aren't pr pr produced uh, for, um, they're not allowed. Mm -hmm. so. I uh, another tangent. I I was once repairing a, a sidur for for a person for a Jewish person. So it's a Jewish prayer book, and uh, uh, I had the same question. I didn't have any experience, and I was like, uh, "Do you have any limitations on which leather I I am going to use?" Uh, and he was like, uh, "And uh, it it could be a pig leather or what?" And uh, I uh, and in the end he was like, "Well, I'm not going to eat it, so I don't care." <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I know it's different. It's just yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was a strange experience to me, and uh, it it reminded me of that you have to be uh, conscious about uh, the choice I'm of materials. I'm very very conscious of it because I feel sometimes I feel a bit uncomfortable that I'm a Westerner with my own my sensibility, and I'm working on these things. It's not my culture. It's not my culture, and I really don't have any right to. To do it but if it's a case of them being preserved or not and i can do it and i can do it respectfully that's all i can do is to do the job in the most respectful way i can possibly do it and that's that's how i sleep at night with them it's it's trying to do the best i can possibly do by anything i work on is anything i work on uh... Western, eastern anything so the, there is there is there is a couple of interesting uh, comments from uh, Ziyat uh, Lorgat. Uh, uh, as the leather undergoes a transformation in the process from skin to leather, it doesn't need to be halal. Thank uh, you. That's very interesting. And then, as you mentioned, pig skin would be a no-no, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> no, it would never ever in a million years. But yes. In, in a similar way, do hogs hair brushes uh, have real hogs hair? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. they do. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, where can you learn board repair or is there a book about uh, it uh, that you can buy? Uh, mm, I'm, I don't know. No, I don't know. But it's it's not actually that difficult. I, try, I would avoid doing things like injecting. Injecting into, because you make it really people inject paste and things into balls and it makes them really soggy and mushy and it destroys actually what's there. I find it much better to work layer by layer by layer by layer because Islamic boards are in layers so it's yeah. not difficult. So working from the bottom, put one layer on, trace the shape for the next one, make the next shape piece, layer that one and build up and I do them oversize and then cut them to size yeah. after. It's that, not... that that's one of the thing, things I, I I learned uh, uh, hard way uh, that you need to uh, make them oversized and cut yeah. them uh, later to to the size. Yes, yes. I've I've too have done that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you've probably got big gaps, so it doesn't work. So you have to make them oversized. 
but yeah, just yeah. layer by layer and keep checking with a micrometer about the spore thickness that you're that you're getting to the and remember you've got a leather layer going on top to finish the size so you've got to be sort of one layer short of the yeah. of the thickness and then yeah. you get beautiful seamless repair yeah and that's definitely a process you need not rush yeah, it's not a rush job, yeah. but it's a very, very, very satisfying job. Yeah, I like, yeah. I like a lot doing yeah. wall repairs. Yeah. It's very, very satisfying. Uh, and uh, then uh, I guess some addition from uh, Chanaka Pereira. Uh, sorry, my question is: uh, Is an NSIC damaged parchment uh, uh, with uh, with an NSIC damaged parchment? How can uh, uh, we do the treatment? And uh, what uh, do do you suggest? Uh, I can't send pictures. Uh, well, w once again, we, we talked about it uh, uh, with Katie uh, during our previous podcast that uh, uh, sometimes you need to uh, s send it to specialists who, who have have, a, have the equipment and experience. And uh... and parchment repair can be done in many different ways. And but parchment is a is a hygroscopic material so you have to be very careful with it because it moves with moisture so you can damage it if you don't know what you're doing so i would say if you don't know how to do it you need to seek help from someone who can who can do it or can teach you to do it but um don't try it at home kids <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. and people repair with paper or they you can do it with parchment you can repair parchment with parchment or gold beater skin or slunk which is um this like a, a stillborn animal skin really really thin so there's there's materials that can be repaired but parchment you have to join it with a with a moisture with a, an adhesive and you've got to know what one is going to do with the other so not for if it's an important thing you, you really need to seek specialist help uh, this was a question from uh, uh, a consultant at Qatar National Library and I looked at, uh, at uh, the uh, YouTube page and they work on some very impressive things so they probably have some expertise in-house I'm sure yeah. that they can they can help with this yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, I, I, I wanted to mention that probably I should say it in the beginning every time we have a guest that uh, we usually uh, we usually name some topic or uh, uh, choose some topic for our live stream and then it just goes ways and uh, uh, it's 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 probably never it never follows the the topic or the theme uh, designated theme uh, theme. Uh, uh, strictly, but uh, I hope uh, this conversation, this discussion was interesting to all of our guests. And even if we missed something or didn't mention some things, uh, they are fine with that. And uh, that's how it will be in the future as well, because that's that's how we do live streams. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry that I can't answer everything because I'm not well, an expert in all aspects. So you... I only know what I know. You, 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 you've uh, told about a lot of interesting things and answered a lot of questions. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, our viewers are, at least some of our viewers are happy and uh, many thanks to you for that and okay. for staying longer with us. And uh, I guess that will be uh, it for today because we, well, uh, 90 minutes is our standard uh, uh, time frame. <laughs> yeah, and it, it it went really fast. So I, uh, we, I, I'm ready to talk more, but we we, we I think we should uh, stay uh, true to our format and uh, not keep Casey uh, for longer. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you for all the wonderful answers from Yael Tal uh, Tal from from Australia, uh, uh, Alina Chapa. Uh, uh, thank you for your uh, wonderful work and for making it uh, with such passion and respect. And uh, uh, what else? Um, uh, no, 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 no more new uh, comments. And thanks anyway. from me. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It was really interesting. Uh, you are, as always, you are a joy to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we wish you. Thank you so much for inviting me, guys, again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we will definitely invite you once again, as we discussed earlier. So. Uh, 
uh, our viewers definitely will see you once again on our live stream and uh, probably on our podcast and uh, we'll stay for a bit longer because it's something like a minute before the stream ends but thank you everyone for staying with us please check the links below uh, we've posted a link to uh, our talks with uh, uh, Kathy Abbott on our podcast before and uh, we probably should have posted a link to her project and maybe Pavel will do it right right now uh, to 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 get it uh, website so you can check uh, 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 all the different things uh, beautiful th things posted there. Well, my um, website only has modern fine bindings. It doesn't have any of my restoration work, so it's only my fine binding stuff. And tomorrow's pass. So. And tomorrow's pass, which is <laughs> sort of related. <laughs> yeah, have a look at that. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, again, I'll, uh, absolutely fantastic. I learned such a lot and have much research to go and do. Absolutely, Timothy Bindery, thank you so much. Kathy Abbott, Ziyad uh, Laga, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for for, for staying on. And uh, uh, well, yeah, I, I'll I'll start stopping the stream and uh, we'll we'll keep talking for a bit longer and uh, uh, then it will end uh, for everyone. Uh, thanks everyone. Please check the link to Patreon. Please subscribe, share our videos, and uh, see you in a week.